Hello and welcome to ICND1 Lab 2, Router Configuration and Managing Configuration Files. For those of you using the Cisco Press Exam Certification Guides, this lab demonstrates some of the key concepts shown in the ICND1 books, Chapter 13. This lab has three main objectives. The first two relate to the configuration process. So by the time you're done with this lab, you should be able to describe the configuration process and how configuration mode uses several configuration submodes. You'll also be able to recognize several of the different configuration submodes based on the command prompts that identify those modes. The third objective relates to the copy command. We'll talk about how to use the copy command to copy different configuration files inside a router and how to see the contents of those configuration files. The scenario for Lab 2 uses two basic steps. In the first step, you'll see a guided tour of how to get into configuration mode, navigate around different configuration modes, and recognize the prompts in those different configuration modes. In the second step, you'll see how to view and copy configuration files between RAM, NVRAM, and TFTP. Lab number two uses the exact same lab topology as lab number one. In this case, we've got three routers and several switches, but we're just going to be using router one in this case. We'll have a PC connected via a console cable to router one, and we'll use a terminal emulator on the PC to access the console and configure the router. So let's begin step one of CVM Lab 2. This step covers the configuration process, so before seeing the command line interface of how to get into configuration mode, let's review a few concepts. First of all, to reach configuration mode, the user must access user mode from either the console, auxiliary port, or using Telnet. Then use the enable command to reach enable or privilege mode. Then use the configure command to reach configuration mode. At this point, the user is in configuration mode and can type configuration commands that configure the router or switch. When the user is tired of that, they can use the end or exit command to exit configuration mode or just press control Z. Configuration mode is separated into several different submodes. For instance, here you see listed the submode called interface mode and use interface submode to configure details about a particular interface. For instance, that interface is IP address. Now the best way to understand and better appreciate configuration submodes is to see it from the command line interface. However, just for reference, note there the line and router submodes that you may see in some of the other labs. So let's take a look at the command line interface. We're starting out on router R1 in user mode. So to get to enable mode, we simply use the enable command press enter and we're in enable mode. This router does not have anything configured at all except the host name of R1 so there's no enable password or enable secret password configured. Now to get into configuration mode you use the configure space terminal command as you see there. Press enter and now you're in configuration mode. Now you know you're in config mode first of all because the configure terminal command puts you into global configuration mode. Also notice the command prompt has the word config in parentheses now. This is indicative of being in global configuration mode. Now to see some of the global configuration commands that you can use here, you can just press the question mark. And as usual, you can hit the space bar to see lots more lines or the enter key to see a few more lines. And if you hit the space bar a few times, you'll notice down here near the bottom, you see the host name command. Host name command is the command used to define the router's own host name. If you page down a little bit more, you'll see the interface command. So we'll take a look at these two commands. So if I press any key uh, to stop the output, and then I say use the hostname command. Notice I type hostname, and say in this case, let's give it hostname Fred. As soon as I press the enter key after the command, the router accepts the command and starts using it. For instance, notice the command prompt has changed from R1 to Fred at the beginning. That's just a reminder that the router immediately uses the command as soon as you type the enter key. So that's one example of a global configuration command. Next, let's look at the interface command. By typing the command interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 and pressing enter, we've told the router configuration mode that we'd like to go into interface config mode for that particular interface. Notice the command prompt has changed. Instead of just config, it shows config dash if IF meaning interface. So we're in a different configuration mode. If I use the question mark here, 
I get a totally different set of commands available. If you compare this list to the list that you saw a little bit earlier in global config mode, notice you don't see some of the commands. For instance, here in the commands that start with H, the hostname command is not listed. That's because in interface configuration mode, only interface appropriate commands are available. Now you do see the command IP there. There are a lot of IP configuration details you might configure under an interface. For instance, you might want to configure the IP address of the interface. So here, we'll use the IP address command, IP space address, then the IP address, and then the subnet mask. And if we press enter, we've just assigned an IP address to that interface. There are several other configuration submodes as well. For instance, to configure the console, you could use the line con0 command, press enter. Notice the command prompt has changed to be config-line toward the end of it. That line refers to the console line, and now you can configure details about the console. Note also that the line con0 command moved us directly from interface configuration mode to line configuration mode. iOS configuration mode accepts any global configuration command from any mode and does what that command says. In this case, the line con0 global configuration command moved us directly to line configuration mode. Next, if we use the question mark, we see a totally different set of commands here as compared with interface configuration mode. For instance, at the console, it's common to want to configure a password, so you could type the login command and then the password command. These two commands together tell the router to require a password at the console. That's what the login command does. And the password command tells the router what password to expect from a user of the console. Once you're done configuring a router in config mode, you can exit configuration mode. You can use the end command or the control Z command to immediately go back to enable mode, or you can use the exit command, which backs you up one level at a time. Notice there I used the exit command and I went from line configuration mode back to global config mode. If I type the exit command again, it would move me all the way back to enable mode. Next, let's move on to step two. When you type in configuration commands in any of the configuration modes, the router puts those commands into RAM memory into a file called the running-config file. Essentially, the running-config file holds all the configuration parameters used by a router when it's up and working. Now, there's another config file in the router in non-volatile RAM, and that file is called the startup-config file. RAM memory loses its contents when a router loses power, so NVRAM is a place where the router can store its configuration commands so that when the router loses power, powers back up, he's got a valid and useful configuration. Now consider the configuration process for a moment. When you go into config mode, you add configuration commands and they change the running config file. However, you want to be ready for the next time the router reboots by having those commands in the startup config file. So to do that, you simply use the copy command. Here we see the command copy space running dash config space startup dash config, which can be abbreviated copy space run space start. And that copies the running config over into the startup configuration file and replaces the old startup configuration file. So that's something you would normally do. Now another command that you might find useful, but probably not nearly as often, is the copy startup config running config command. Now this command copies the startup configuration file over into RAM. However, in some cases that copy does not replace the running config, it only adds to the configuration in running config. So you have to be a little bit careful about using the command. But under normal operations, it's pretty common to both configure the router, then use the copy space run space start command to copy the running config file over to the startup configuration file. It's also a good practice to keep a copy of your configurations outside the router and switch. So you could use a TFTP server as shown here and copy the running config from the router over to the server or copy the startup config from NVRAM over to the server. Then later, if you ever have a problem with the router and want to restore an old configuration, you can use the copy command that has the TFTP option first. For instance, copy TFTP running dash config, which copies the configuration file from the server back into the router. So let's go back to the command line interface and look at the contents of the running config and startup config files. By using the show space running dash config command and pressing enter, you see the contents of the running config file. Notice near the top, we see the hostname fred command. That's where we change the hostname from r1 to fred. If you hit the space bar two, three more times, you'll get down to where we see interface serial 010. Notice we have the IP address 1.1.1.1 command that we had configured earlier. 
And then finally, if you space further down toward the bottom, you see the line console zero command with the password Cisco and login commands that we had configured earlier. You may have noticed that the output of the show running config command includes a lot of configuration commands that you haven't seen yet or we haven't talked about in the video. iOS includes many default configuration commands in the output. However, we'll stay focused on a short list of commands for this video. Now if you do the show startup config command, as you see here, notice the host name lists R1 instead of Fred. Hit the spacebar a few times, notice there is no IP address configured on serial 010 right now. And going further down under line console 0, notice there's no login command or no password command. So indeed, after configuring things in configuration mode, the running config file was updated, but the startup config file was not automatically updated. Now, if you want to save the configuration that's in the running config file into the startup-config file so it's used the next time the router boots, you need to use the copy space running-config space startup-config command that you see there on the screen. When you press enter, you get a prompt question that says, well, do you want to copy this to the startup-config file? And of course we do, so you just press the enter key. It tells us it's building the config, and there you go, you've copied the file. So now, if we were to do a show startup config command again, as you see here, notice the host name Fred is listed there in the startup config where it wasn't before we did the copy command. If you page down a little, under interface serial 010, you see the IP address. And down at the bottom under line console 0, of course, the password and login commands have been copied there as well. At this point, the running configuration file and the startup configuration file should be identical. This concludes lab number two. In this lab, you've learned how to describe the configuration process and how it uses different configuration modes. You've also seen the different command prompts that identify several of the more popular different configuration submodes. And you've seen how to use the show and copy command, in particular how to use the copy command to copy the running configuration file and the startup configuration file.